Hi all, I'm Prince Gupta. I'm a research product manager in the Reality Labs Research Division. And today I'm going to tell you about why Project Aria is the best device in the world for egocentric research and how you can leverage it for your own work. I'm going to do that by first introducing Project Aria and then telling you about Aria Partner Program, which is available to universities, startups, and corporations to access Project Aria. Richard talked about always-on contextualized AI. If you want to build always-on contextualized AI and you look at the landscape of devices which are available to you to do that, you can map it in these two axes. First is device capabilities. So you can have devices like the Quest line or even HoloLens or the new uh, Vision Pro device. They have good sensors on them. Uh, so they have you know, quite a good sensors. But if you look at the other axis, which is form factor, they don't have a great form factor. They weigh you know, somewhere close to in the order of 500 grams. So you can only wear it for about 30 minutes or so. The other set of devices are like GoPro devices or VUSX classes types of devices, which have good fa form factor for longer duration of use, but they don't have the right sensors which are needed for egocentric research. And therefore, we discovered that there is a gap in the market of a device which has the right form factor, which can, you can wear for all day of use, and also has the, has the right sensors. And that's why we introduced Project Aria. Project Aria is a device which lets you capture all these rich multimodal sensor data information in a wearable form factor. Project Aria is not a consumer product, and it is not a prototype. It is what we call is a research tool. Project Aria is packed with sensors. It has the two SLAM tracking cameras on the side, a high resolution RGB camera in the front as well, two eye tracking cameras, so in total five cameras, seven microphones all around the glasses to be able to capture spatialized audio, two IMUs, magnetometer, barometer, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 128 GB of onboard storage, all this packed into a 70 gram device. And there is an onboard battery as well, which can last up to one to two hours of use on a continuous basis. And you, know, you can always connect a battery pack as well for all day of use. In fact, let me show you uh, what all the sensors actually look like. OK. So on the top left, you can see the two SLAM tracking cameras, which are running live, uh, the RGB high resolution uh, camera as well. These are my eyes over here. So these are the two inward facing eye tracking cameras. All the other, these graphs are for the various uh, motion sensors on the device. Uh, the IMUs, magnetometer, barometer. This last one over here is the seven uh, microphones around the device. So this is the full set of sensor suit which is available on these devices. But just having great sensors is actually not enough. You also need all those sensors to be perfectly aligned and timestamp. Therefore, on Project Aria glasses, with the SOC on the system, we make sure that they are all running through a common clock says that all the sensors are timestamped with a common clock, and you get access to the raw sensor data as well as the timestamp for each of those sensors. What this allows us to do is that if these were not aligned, then they would be drift in the system over time. What this allows us to do is that in the whole system, there is no drift at all as long as you can run the device. This allows us to synchronize all the sensors on one ARIA device, but what if you need multiple ARIA devices to be synchronized as well? There are many applications in which you need time alignment across multiple users. So in this video, you can see nine different users who are wearing ARIA glasses. All the video feed and all the other sensors which are coming from uh, these nine different devices are synchronized together. I mean, think of building applications where you have two users collaborating on a whiteboard, and you want to align sensor data of those two users. You can do that through these systems, because you can connect the two, uh, you know, to ARIA devices in that case, just on a single uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, and be able to synchronize the sensor data coming from multiple ARIA devices. So you know ARIA devices have great sensors. You can synchronize all the sensors, and you can synchronize multiple ARIA devices as well. Another thing which is quite unique about ARIA devices is that it has very robust calibration. So all the sensors on the device, their position and orientation are highly accurately calibrated at the factory. But these devices are somewhat flexible. You know, even by the act of like 
wearing the glasses and then taking them off, the glasses go through a little bit of twist and turn. And the calibration of each of the sensors vary a little bit, which is not perceivable by human eye, but the algorithms detect those variations. Therefore, we have another feature in the system called online calibration, which adjusts for those slight movements as the system is, is running. So we support both robust calibration at the factory and also online calibration for the various algorithms. But so you know, now you have a good understanding that ARIA is a very powerful device. As uh, Spider-Man said, uh, with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. So to make sure we are innovating responsibly, we support a number of privacy features. At a hardware level, uh, the glasses have two LEDs, one outward facing LED, which is visible up to 25 feet. So if there is any recording going on with the glasses, the bystanders will be able to know. There's also an inward facing LED, such that the wearer is always in control as well. The wearer always knows when the glasses are recording. There is a physical privacy switch on the glasses as well, which serves two functions. If the glasses are recording, and in between you turn on that privacy switch, it is going to delete the current recording which is going on. So it will completely remove it. And second, if the privacy switch is, is flicked on, then you cannot turn on the recording on the glasses uh, at all. So it will make sure that no sensors are able to be turned on. These are some of the hardware features on the glasses. On the software side, we support two different anonymization models uh, for data sets which are co collected in public spaces. We anonymize faces and license places that we make sure that we remove personally identifiable information from these recordings coming from the glasses. OK, so I hope this gives you a good view of what these glasses are, what they are capable of. Now let me tell you about the ARIA partner program. When we started Project ARIA, our goal is to accelerate machine perception and AI research, which is needed for future AR glasses. We do that by serving two different communities. Of course, we use these glasses quite a bit internally at Meta for various types of research. But it is equally important for us to partner with the external research community, which is all of you, academics, startups, and other corporations. The reason is, at Meta, we firmly believe that we're building an open ecosystem, and we're building an open metaverse. Therefore, it is strategically important for us to partner and thrive and foster this open science in the community. And to that end, I'm very happy to announce that we're you know, announcing and, and launching a new website, projectaria.com, for all our partners, where you can go and get access to all the information about Project Aria in a single place and access various resources like data sets and, uh, and other GitHub repositories, everything in a single place. Now, we partner with, uh, with different partners by offering two different things, which is part of the ARIA partner program. The first is the ARIA Research Kit. The, for ARIA Research Kit, you have to apply through our website. The ARIA Research Kit consists of the glasses, a number of machine perception services, and client SDK. And also, we have Open Science Initiative. For Open Science Initiative, we have you know, open source data sets, tools, and models which are available on GitHub uh, and also on our, on our website. So you don't have to apply for it at all. You can just access it in, in open source. So these are the two ways in which you can access uh, ARIA. And we have dedicated sections on each of these two areas throughout the tutorial today. But at a high level, this is our engagement model with other partners. One, the data that you collect using Project ARIA is your data. The IP that you develop using data from ARIA is your IP. What we are interested in here is to learn together. We want to be able to discover new use cases for future AR glasses and also do new research in the field of egocentric perception. All we ask is that we all agree to a common community guidelines. These glasses are very powerful. And therefore, we want to make sure that these are used responsibly when we are using it out in the community. Therefore, we have a set of common community guidelines to make sure that we are all agreeing to using these glasses responsibly. So with that, let me show you two different examples of how partners have used these glasses so far. I have retinitis pigmentosa, which is a genetic disorder. I've been losing my sight since birth. If I'm in a completely new place, there's no way to know where I'm going on my own. There have been times when I would just be put somewhere, like maybe you know, in a room or just at a gate. Might have to wait over an hour for someone to assist you to get to where you need to go. 
Pretty degrading, huh? You just feel like you're not part of the society that can just stand up and go and do what they want to do. NAVCOG can change that. Juice bar is on your right. What we're working on is a turn-by-turn -turn assistive technology that we've developed at Carnegie Mellon University uh, starting in about 2014. And it helps to give people with visual impairment the ability to navigate in unfamiliar environments by presenting audio instructions at precisely the right moment, helping them to get from A to B. There is a ramp, 140 feet. For years, I've gotten around with the assistance of my guide dog, Flirt. I love and depend on her dearly, but a guide dog is not a navigation system. So one of the biggest challenges for a person without sight is figuring out where they are. NavCog solves this problem by using Bluetooth beacons and other types of sensing to figure out where the user is, especially when GPS isn't reliable. A charging station is on your right. We put up hundreds of Bluetooth beacons at the airport, but then we realized that we can't do this everywhere around the world. We teamed up with Reality Labs and Meta and started using their Project ARIA research glasses to build a 3D map of the Pittsburgh International Airport. We used that map to train the AI localization models running on a mobile phone. The maps help the user figure out where they are without having to rely so heavily on external beacons. This is huge because it makes NavCog scalable. As we consider the future of augmented reality and wearable technologies, it's clear that these devices will have a profound impact on improving people's lives, giving us new ways to see and explore the world. Partnering with universities like CMU allows us to consider the value of these technologies and bring them close to people who might benefit from them most. When I first used NavCog, I felt liberated, I felt equal knowing that this tool is going to be out there and it's going to be bigger and better is just going to enhance, you know, my mobility. You have arrived. And just let me live an everyday life. That example is, is a very powerful example. It shows you, you know, how ARIA devices can be used to provide accessibility features uh, for visually impaired people to navigate in, in spaces. Now, let me show you. So that was a collaboration with the Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, the next example I'm going to show you is uh, with a corporation, BMW. You may assume that it is simple to deliver virtual experiences to passengers. But it's not so easy. Moving vehicles pose a challenge because the sensors get conflicting signals from the device's motion within the car and the car's motion within the world. We collaborated with BMW to incorporate information from a BMW car sensor array into the tracking system of our Project ARIA research glasses. It enabled Meta to create an in-vehicle tracking system that simultaneously calculates the device's location relative to the car and the moving car's location relative to the world. We are excited about this progress because this could mean that travel is going to be more enjoyable, more social and productive, more relaxing or more fun. Is this a big deal? That's a pretty big deal, yeah. <laughs>